Pastor Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a great start to the week. Uh, you've had a great day, so you've had a great start to your your week, and you are pushing towards a very specified and important goal. That is the definition of success to me. It is the progress, the steady progression towards a worthy goal. Um, I've lived my life by that for as long as I've measured success. Uh, it's not just hitting goals. It's not just uh, having something that you feel you really want. It's the process of getting there. You have to learn how to celebrate the progress along the way or you will get bogged down and drained if all you're celebrating is three days a week for those of you who do 90 day, 60 day, I mean 90 day, six month and one year goals. Uh, when you pro make progression, celebrate it. I mean, don't have to throw all out uh, fest, but definitely learn how to celebrate it. On that note, I want to move into the reason I'm here. Uh, last week, I t at the beginning of the last week, uh, this time, I told you that we were doing a specified and targeted fundraiser for Black Man Lead, which is my uh, passion work. I do a lot of work in the community. I've done a lot of research. Uh, I've written a lot of books, but my passion is the building of strong men by the empowerment of young black males. And Black Man Lead is a rite of passage program that I developed. Last week I told you we were doing a specified and targeted fundraiser uh, and that the goal was to hit $10,000 by the end of the week. Uh, I mean, just simple mathematics tells me it's far more uh, than just possible. Uh, the problem is, as, as I've always learned, is it probable? And um, I, I pushed anyway because I believe that with the work I've done in the community, I deserve the right to ask. Uh, whether someone gives or not is their prerogative, and I'm not one to sit up and bash. I'm not one to sit up and go on rants. You know, I'll tell you how I feel. I'll tell you what I think is going to be the outcome of this quest we call black liberation solely by how people are given and invested in seeing things change. See, we love to complain. We love to talk about what's wrong. We love to sit up and point fingers. We love to talk about a bunch of different things, finance and, and, and politics and, 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 and a bunch of, uh, you know, how women act and all that. But we definitely love talking about how uh, horrible black men are, how dangerous black men are, how violent black men are, how trifling black men are, how uninvested or divested black men are in empowering uh, black women or in empowering black youth and, and so many other things. But we never want to sit down and actually look at the causality. Uh, whenever I do something, it's real simple. I want to look at what the problem is, what the cause is, what the solution is. Um, and so that's what my research does, is it puts me in the middle of it, and then we ask questions. Uh, you get solutions by first understanding that something's wrong, then you start to ask questions, and you find the answers to the questions. Um, it may be uh, a need to look into a lot of empirical, existing empirical data. It may be a need to conduct your own uh, studies and examinations of certain realities, but it is a passion work. It's not something that you sit down and you go do a couple of readings, read a couple of books, and you got it figured out. I've been doing this for 30 years. I ask myself, why is it that there's such a high incarceration for black males? Why is it that there's such a high dropout rate for black males? Which actually coincides with the incarceration, by the way. That's why they call it the school to prison pipeline. But why is it that black males are so violent towards one another? More importantly, why are black males so violent towards black women? I've asked all these questions over the course of the years, and I've done a great deal of studies. I've stood on the backs of some great giants in the research uh, area, black, black giants like Amos Wilson, Dr. Naeem Ogbar, Dr. Joy DeGruy. Um, Dr. Um, Howard Stevenson of the University of Pennsylvania, who has done unbelievably remarkable work. And then I had to conduct studies of my own. I had to do research. I have counseled and, <clears throat> and uh, sit in front of literally hundreds upon hundreds of young black males. I've sit in front of hundreds upon hundreds of parents of black males. Uh, I have sit in front of hundreds upon hundreds of victims of black males. 
and I have put a lot of work and understanding in it. And what I can tell you, there are solutions. Um, number one, we know for a fact that when it comes to African-American, adolescent, and young adult male violence, that um, something as simple as proper socialization reduces the occurrence and the risk of violence upon African-American, adolescent, and young adult males simply by properly socializing. What is socialization? Socialization is preparation and an introduction into identity and purpose. It is a blueprint of what you are and how you become. It is a, an introduction into who you are and what you are responsible for. It gives your life purpose and it gives you a blueprint on how to live your life socially, psych psychologically, and through modeling, you sit up and look at men who are doing what they're supposed to do and you gain a sense of self and understanding and you work towards it because you have purpose. You give value to your life. And here's a beautiful thing about that. When you give value to your life, you tend to value people who look like you. But when you don't have value on your life, when you don't see any real true reason, any true need for being here, you tend to not only not value your lives, but you tend to not value the lives of people who look like you. And this is just one of the things that we see. We see that urban hassle is a contributor to the edginess that leads towards uh, African-American uh, adolescent young, young adult male violence. We know that uh, urban hassle is the things that you normally see in inner city. Uh, sirens and gunfire all during the night, having to navigate through gang violence and, and, and drug activity just to get to school and get home from school. Um, uh, another thing, uh, if you live in the, 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 the east, the northeast, uh, or, or midwest, uh, dealing with L trains all times of the day and night, uh, trying to study in the, in the, in the uh, apartment is shaking, and so many other things. And then you deal with um, having been a victim also contributes to it, having been a victim and then witnessing violence, just simply seeing someone else be victimized uh, with violence uh, increases the risk of violence. So being in a violent environment increases violence, being a victim of violence, be, being around urban uh, hassle, that is, I mean, just being in that environment increases the risk. And it, this is not racial in the sense of like it's a proclivity for black people. It's a proclivity for people in that environment. You take anybody, you put them in an urban environment, you make it a violent environment, and then you you you, you make them a victim or they get to see this all the time, they will increase in their proclivity to commit violence. But we did learn in our research that when you take these same children and you properly socialize them. And what we do with our socialization is we take them as early as four years old and we start to develop a mindset of black manhood, black responsibility, uh, you know, black unity, a bunch of things that we try to teach people after they become adults and they've already had uh, a, a paradigm set for years on how they're gonna live their lives, how they're gonna respond to things. They're dealing with stacked trauma and complex trauma and we're expecting them to perform in a certain way without actually uh, dealing with the issues that they are dealing with. I'm talking about years upon years of untreated issues and we're expecting optimal, optimal performance. That's not going to happen. We're going to have to meet this on a number of different levels. That's what Black Man Lead is. Now, back to it. What, what, what I was saying in the beginning, we set out last week for a targeted uh, fundraiser. That means that we do a lot of things at the Odyssey Project, and we try to get some of the funding supplemented. Um, if those who follow me for a long time know that less than 5% of any program that we do is actually funded outside of the organization, meaning that we fund our own programs. Um, that's a challenge, especially with me being the founder and executive director and the primary funder. Now, with that being said, we set out to try to do this and we, you know, we do what we do. Uh, we set out for 10,000 on last week. We raised a little over 300. For those of you who gave, um, we definitely want to thank you for that. For those of you who gave $100, we want to say thank you, and if you haven't let us know what your hoodie size is, because anybody who donates over uh, 100, 100 or more 
uh, will get a black man lead hoodie. You need to let us know your hoodie size and where to send it to. Um, you can give through the link that's in the description box or you can give directly through uh, Cash App, our Cash App uh, account. Uh, if you do give through Cash App, let us know what your um, hoodie size is and how we can get it to you. Uh, that's important. Uh, but here's, here's what I want to talk to you about. We can complain until we're blue in the face. I'm not a complainer. I'm not a complainer in life. I've had an unbelievable life that I am very uh, happy about in the sense of what I've been able to accomplish. It has not, however, been without challenges. It's, it has not uh, been without some very difficult moments. And in those difficult moments, uh, one of the things I believe that made it possible for me to come out so forcefully and relatively quickly is the fact that I didn't complain. I didn't sit there, I didn't wallow in misery, I didn't complain, I didn't blame, I didn't point fingers, even though some of the things I ended up in, I was intentionally put in through the planning and scheming and plotting of others. Didn't sit up and whine and complain, it does absolutely nothing. What I did is I made up in my mind that I'm going to determine the causality. I'm going to determine the problem, the causality, and the solution. I'm coming out, and there's absolutely nothing that's going to stop me. I put in the work. See, complaining does nothing. We've got to get off of the complaining. We've got to start investing in the solution. You know, we've got to start investing in the solution. Now, if I thought that maybe it was just that people didn't believe in what I did, you know, it would bother me because who doesn't want people to believe in the work they've done when they've been doing that work for decades, right? But if, it, if I thought people didn't believe in what I did and that's why I can't get support, I'd be like, hey, look, you know what, <laughs> Rick, you probably need to be doing something different. You know, but see, the thing is, I'm one of the best at what I do. That's how I make a living. That's how I've been able to take care of my family. And ultimately, that's how I've been able to fund a program that can't get uh, external fund funding. So I know I'm good at it. But what if other people, what if the people that I needed to actually get behind it and fund it didn't believe me? So, okay, I, I get it. But I have people landing on my desk that need help from this program daily. So obviously people know it works because they keep sending people to me. So it works. It, it definitely works. Like I said, I've had young men in front of me. I'm constantly getting uh, mothers primarily bringing their sons. And, you know, and I mean, everywhere from sons, you know, 9, 10 years old up to some young adults. Mother saying, look, hey, I'm, I'm bringing, I need you to do something, work with me. And sometimes they come to me and they're able to cover the costs and most of the times not. To be totally honest, as much as black men are der 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 derided, as much as black men are needed, there shouldn't be one person that's coming so that they can be better, a better man, a better husband, a better father, a better brother. There shouldn't be one person turned away because there are no resources. It just sh it shouldn't happen. And, you know, for the people who came along and told me, you know, things like, hey, you know, your thinking is for a small group. Most people aren't going to think like you. Uh, you know, I get it. But at the bottom line, you're the very ones that need to be giving because you actually understand what's going on. I, there are a bunch of people I can't expect to understand uh, because they're so ingrained in the problem that they can't possibly see the solution. But if you can understand what I'm saying has uh, merit, you're the ones I need to be helping. You're the ones I need to come out of your comfort zone and say, look, we're going to get behind a program. And if it's not my program, find a program. Get behind a program that's actually out there making moves, doing things to make things happen. It's easy to sit back and just complain. It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to find fault. Well, what about this and what if that happens? 
I look at the spending habits of my people. I don't tell people how to spend their money. They earned it. But I look at the spending habits of my people. It tells me a lot about what we are truly committed to doing and what we're com really convicted about and how we're moving about. And I don't see black liberation and black empowerment anywhere in our distant future. Definitely not in our near future because our thinking isn't aligning with what it takes to make it happen. And if we don't start doing something with our younger generation, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to make the same mistakes we made that our parents made. And we're going to be some hard workers, but we're never going to really truly gain ground and liberate ourselves and empower ourselves because we simply don't practice the right principles. We don't move in the right way. We don't have the type of unity necessary and so many other things. We work so hard against one another. The mindset in which we view one another and how we act around one another speaks in volumes to how we see ourselves. We might not admit it. Uh, we, we, we might not want to accept it, uh, but that's the reality. Look, I'm going to get off of here. We're going to carry this thing over uh, again for the people who gave. Uh, you are definitely appreciated. Uh, and this is definitely nothing to do with you. You are appreciated and uh, more than you could ever know. Uh, I'm not a person that looks for validation outside of myself. I tell people all the time, uh, I'm kind of special because I stroke my own ego. I don't need my ego stroked. I don't need people to like my, my videos. I don't need people to do it. Now, if you like it, that helps other people because the more people uh, that like it, the more people see it. Uh, the more people share it, the more people see it. So it helps people that way, but it doesn't make me feel any better, any worse about myself. The people who come along and press the thumbs down button, never give it a second thought. I'm not here for your approbation or your approval. I'm here to make a difference in this world. Uh, but I'm telling you that it means a lot when someone goes in their pocket and actually says, I believe in you with their money. Uh, that makes me sit a different way. It makes me get up in the morning and, and go out there and do whatever I can do with whatever I have because somebody, nobody goes into their pocket to just say, hey, you're pretty cool. People, people make those sacrifices because they believe you can do something maybe they can't or something, they, something about something they're really passionate and believe in. And so for you, those of you who gave, man, mad love and, and appreciation, don't ever, ever think that you're not on my mind. <clears throat> so thank you. But we got work to do, and so we're going to be back, and we're going to push even harder this week. Uh, and, and, and those who know me know this is not my area of expertise, specialty, or passion. I hate asking. Um, but it's, 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 it's been long beyond my time to swallow my pride and to get out there and to really take it in. I'm going to really get into some uh, deeper uh, uh, facts about what I've discovered over the years. And we're going to talk about it on an educated level. And I'm going to share with you why this is so important over the next four or five days. And I'm going to ask you to give. Again, if you give um, 100 or more, get uh, a hoodie we need to know your size and make sure when you sign up you give your address I mean when you contribute you give your address as well and we'll get those out to you um, and on that note look I'm gonna get ready to get out of here but we definitely uh, need your support and um, I'm looking forward to it and to those out there that are coming and asking for help don't stop coming we're gonna work through this we'll figure it out but don't stop coming uh, my goal is to be the Mecca of the yearning when it comes to healing in, in, in black America. I want us to be the Mecca for healing and mental health, mental strength, mental development. And a big part of that is going to be black men. Um, there are so many things that we don't understand about what black men go through. And it's easy to blame black men. And I am definitely one and have been one that holds black men accountable to a level that I've been told by some black women like ease up on them uh, but I'm not asking them to do anything that I don't wake up every day and do my best to do myself so on that note look it's time to get off of here you guys have an unbelievable day and I'm going to step away from here 
and I look forward to it. So support and show some love. I appreciate you. And you have a great day.